Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Straight to Blu-ray. My name is James, and I know it's been two, almost three weeks since I posted my last video, but unfortunately, life gets in the way sometimes, uh, so I've been unable to uh, record a video, but I am back. I have another 4K review, another of my average James 4K reviews, and in this review, I am going to be going over the new Scream Factory edition of Poltergeist 2. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel. Like I said, going to be doing Poltergeist 2 here, 4K review. This is the fairly new, this came out about a week or two ago, um, from Scream Factory. I uh, went ahead and picked this one up, watched it, I think it was last week. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and give my review on it. What I thought about, you know, the color grading, the, the picture quality, the audio, uh, what you get exactly special features wise, all the goodies, all that good stuff if you decide you want to pick up this edition of Poltergeist 2. Like I said, this is new on 4K here from Scream Factory. You do, in fact, get a uh, 4K disc and a Blu-ray disc. Uh, this is the slipcover here. Not too shabby. At the back there. And then on the inside, you basically have the same as far as what it's going to look like there. Sorry about the glare. So nothing different there. It doesn't have any kind of reversible artwork although they did put a little arts on the inside of the discs there so like i said you do get a blu-ray and a 4k um, no digital copy uh, screen factory doesn't really do that um, but you do like i said get both discs on there if you you know pick up the old uh, poltergeist 2 on 4k um, as far as the special features uh, there's not going to be really anything new here um, this is just going to be stuff that was on the blu-ray that they just kind of ported over that's Unfortunately, that's Scream Factory for you. Sometimes they don't, they don't really give you anything extra except the 4K upgrade on that. Um, but you do get, so the uh, like I said, you get uh, two discs, 4K Blu-ray. So on the 4K disc, it says you're basically, obviously you're getting the new 4K restoration from the original camera negative for the movie. Uh, it is uh, presented in HDR and Dolby Vision. So you can, if you have a Dolby Vision uh, setup, you can watch it there. And it does have a Dolby Atmos track. Uh, there is an audio commentary with writer and producer Michael Grace. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. G-R-A-I-S. And then there's an audio commentary with webmaster of the Poltergeist fan site, uh, David Furtney, if you so happen to want to watch that. Uh, that is on the 4K, the actual 4K disc. Now, if you are um, want to see the, what's on the Blu-ray disc, I didn't actually watch the Blu-ray version of it. I do have the Blu-ray copy of it, but uh, there's obviously more special features. Um, once again, the new restoration from the original camera negative. That's the Blu-ray copy. Uh, it is, once again, says presented in Dolby Atmos. And then same thing with the audio, co audio commentary with Michael Grace. Uh, audio commentary with David Furtney. You get Robbie's Return, an interview with actor Oliver Robbins. Uh, the Spirit World, interview with the visual effects team's Richard Edlund. You also get, oh, oh I'm sorry, Richard Edlund, Steve Johnson, uh, and Screaming Mad George. That was all part of the visual effects team. Uh, you get the Ghosts of Ginger, a look at the contributions of artist H.R. Ginger, featuring rare photos and illustrations, and interview with friend and agent Les Barony. Uh, you're also going to get there back, The Making of Poltergeist 2, uh, Monster Shop, I'm not really sure what that is, Ghost Makers, The Magic of Poltergeist 2, you get theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still galleries. So most of it, it there's nothing really here as far as getting any kind of Looks like interviews with, like, the main cast. Now, if you know really anything about Poltergeist, really one and two, uh, especially two here, that a lot of the... It, it's the kind of a little sad that I, I want to say... I mean, everybody knows about Heather O'Rourke, and, it, you know, she died very, very young shortly after making this movie, but there's actually two other characters, or actors. The uh, guy that plays the old creepy dude in here uh, had cancer, I believe, when he, this was filming. He died during the filming of the movie. Um, and then the uh, guy who played the Native American, can't remember his name offhand, um, he died, I want to say, a couple years after this was made. So, yeah, kind of a, a little bit of a curse on this one. But uh, So that's obviously uh, why a lot of them aren't available for uh, interviews. But uh, they could have got the parents uh, to do it, but I guess I guess that's not included on that one. Um, so, yeah, obviously we got Dolby Vision and HDR. I, will, I watched the HDR version of it. I do have a Dolby television, but I don't have a Dolby 4K player yet, so uh, I did not watch the Dolby Vision version of this. I did watch the HDR version. Um, this this is a movie that uh, you know I used I watched when I was a kid 
because uh, I watched a lot of, you know, I guess, inappropriate kid movies or, or movies if you were a kid back in the day. Um, and I always, I saw this almost exclusively. I didn't really even see the first Poltergeist. So this was really my kind of first introduction to Poltergeist. Um, so I saw this a bunch. So I always found this to be my favorite of I, even more than the first one. Um, I watched it for this, uh, the 4K edition. It's probably been, God, like 15 or 20 years since I've seen the entire movie. I'd say probably 20 years since I've seen the entire movie, just like from beginning to end, not just something on television. Not quite as good uh, as I remember. Uh, I don't, you know, sometimes I think when you get older, things just aren't as good as you thought they were. It's definitely, you know, a cool, creepy movie. Uh, the, 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 the old man in this one's definitely, you know, up there, probably top five with kind of those, you know, characters that are super creepy in horror movies. Um, but not quite as good as I, I, I thought, or at least I remembered. Um, but, you know, still a, still a pretty good, uh, you know, scary horror movie. Uh, as far as, like I said, the picture quality on this one, I thought it looked good. Um, like I said, this is the HDR version I saw, not the Dolby Vision. Um, there's some really good, uh, use, you know, the colors really pop in some of the scenes, especially when the old man is walking up um, to the house, and then Heather O'Rourke's character is kind of sitting out there playing in the grass. Um, I think she's playing with flowers or something like that. You know, really great, uh, you know, colors there with the green grass, um, you know, and the black from him, you know, the, the outfit he's wearing. Uh, just really good kind of contrast. A lot of bright colors on that. Like I said, flowers in the daytime. Uh, I thought looked really good in this one. You know, the darks looked the, the appropriate darkness level. Um, it didn't look anything. Wasn't like, you know, grainy. Well, obviously there's grain in the film, but it didn't have that weird kind of like off black look. The, the blacks were black, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so I thought overall it looked good. I thought that the uh, there was some great detail in this one. You know, the, the, the faces in this um, I thought looked really good. Obviously, this movie is from 80, early 80s, I think 85, 86. Um, so there is some special effects in this one. And, you know, it's 1986 special effects. They weren't exactly the greatest, so don't expect any miracles on this one. Um, they still look like kind of cheesy special effects. Uh, but overall picture quality I thought looked really good. Nice detail and nice color pop. When, you know, it's not the most colorful movie, obviously. Um, but I thought when there were colors looked really good. And then the, the black levels I thought were really good on this one too. Um, the real issue I had with this is the sound. This does have a Dolby Atmos track on it. Which I do have Dolby Atmos. Uh, the issue I had, and, and you know, this may not be as big an issue. Well, it probably still would be a little bit. Um, if you own a house as opposed to an apartment, I have a, a surround sound with Dolby Atmos in an apartment, so there's only so much I can do, you know, loudness wise. The difference between like the audio, the dialogue, and the like, the sound effects were was very large. Like the audio was way lower. The sound effects, were, you know, so I'd have to basically, you know, turn the volume up pretty loud just to be able to hear the dialogue. And then when the special effects came through, I mean, or, or any of the music, it was extremely loud. Uh, so there's there's a really big gap in between. I, I don't know how that happened, um, but it can be very difficult. You have to really turn up the volume. I was pretty high up just to hear the dialogue in general over the uh the you know the the ambiance the sound and the you know the effects the music and stuff like that so i don't think the music and effects were too loud it's just the dialogue was extremely low i usually never have to turn my surround sound up that high on the volume just to be able to hear the um the dialogue going on there now i'm, I'm sure i could have adjusted some of the settings on there but that's not really something you want to have to do when you watch a movie um so that that definitely was a big issue if you have an apartment just be aware you're, you're going to have to hold on to that remote because there's going to be you have to jack it up pretty high to hear actually hear them talking as opposed and then when the music cuts in or something scary happens you get that much louder you're going to have to do that which is kind of a pain in the butt um it may not be like i said as much of a problem if you own a home but you know still it's you're going to have to jack it up pretty loud just to be able to hear the dialogue so the audio not exactly uh, the best on this one, uh, just for that simple fact. I mean, the, the I think the Atmos sounded pretty good. It was nothing, I wasn't blown away by anything on that, you know. Um, it, it was just okay, sounded, you know, decent. It's just really the difference in levels of the dialogue compared to the, you know, music and, and the scary kind of sounds, that kind of stuff was really the only, uh, the only issue, but it was a pretty big issue, like I said, if you happen to uh, live in an apartment. All right, everybody, that is going to do it for this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you picked up Poltergeist 2 on 4K. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite Poltergeist movie is. Like I said, I always, when I was younger, used to thought 2 was the better one because that's kind of what I grew up on. 
Um, now I think I need to rewatch number one. I think I might have to switch that up, but uh, definitely still a fun movie to watch. Really cool that, like I said, that old man in here is just super creepy. He does a really good job in it. Um, so it's definitely, definitely a good watch. Just, to, you know, like I said, picture quality looks good. A little bit of issues with the audio, but overall, uh, not too bad. As far as whether you should pick it up on 4K, I, I think you could probably do without. You know, if you have the, the Blu-ray edition of this, I, I really don't think, you know, drop it in the Scream Factory, so they're not cheap. Um, I don't really think you need to drop the $30, $35 to pick this one up, you're not getting any new real, uh, um, you know, extra special features. The audio, I can't remember if the audio was the same issue on the Blu-ray. I'd have to go back and check. Um, but, you know, as far as, you know, the, the money you're spending just to get that slight, you know, upgrade in picture quality, probably not worth it. Um, you know, if this is something you don't own, that's, you know, even then you could probably still get a pretty good price on the Blu-ray. I don't know how available that is. Um, but if you already happen to have that, you could probably, uh, skip the upgrade on this one if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, like I said, let me, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about the old Poltergeist 2. Let me know your, your order of favorites is, is two better than one, one better than two. Maybe you like three, who knows? Uh, but leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Uh, as always, everybody, thanks so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next video.